Okay. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here um, virtually uh, and, and talk about uh, clouds in the network today. Um, so obviously, um, you've been hearing quite a lot about cloud computing in general. Um, so uh, a brief perspective uh, from me on cloud computing. Uh, cloud computing is essentially computing resources offered as a service. Um, and while this is uh, an amazing emergent uh, capability, uh, it's certainly not new. Um, in fact, Multics, um, which was a precursor to Unix, was in fact created uh, to support uh, computing as a utility. Uh, obviously, things have changed dramatically uh, since then, but the idea that we can reach out uh, into the network and access computing resources um, w without uh, concern about where they are physically located is uh, a powerful, powerful idea and has been something of a goal uh, for quite some time. One, one thing that has changed recently is that advances in computing virtualization make service-oriented computing like cloud computing even more flexible. And uh, I would say that virtualization is a key enabler for modern cloud computing. The ability to, to run uh, and, and move, suspend, and, and resume uh, virtual machines really enables the sort of elastic allocation of, of cloud computing uh, that, that we are uh, able to take advantage of today. So for both enterprise and scientific computing, there are many uh, potential benefits of cloud computing. Um, better utilization of resources uh, in that periods of, of demand by an application or user base can be offset by lulls in the uh, in the demand of others, um, the ability to um, power down uh, resources uh, to save to save energy over time, uh, and most importantly, perhaps the access uh, access to large pools of resources without ongoing maintenance, without having to maintain uh, our own clusters, a pile of machines. We can reach out um, on demand and and get access to these to, to resources. Uh, and uh, uh, turn them off when we're finished. One key thing which is obvious is that ubiquitous and high performance networking is, is really critical to this vision, to the ability to uh, access resources and, and utilize them without, uh, without concern for where they are. Uh, the, the network is, is central to the ability to do this. Uh, so again, um, as I know you've heard, there are various models of cloud computing, software as a service, um, which implicitly includes network costs in, in a sense. Um, and uh, the network in, in that case is really not called out directly. Uh, in the case of infrastructure as a service, um, you can create your own infrastructure. And in this case, uh, the ability to have the infrastructure you create uh, connected and connected in the way that you specify is, is critical. So. For, for many applications, in fact, um, uh, a large body of applications, uh, the ability, the efficacy of cloud computing and, and, and cloud storage, um, it, it depends on their ability to communicate effectively. Um, there are performance implications, as, as I'll discuss, with, um, with the, the coupling of, of storage, compute, um, even different uh, services in a multi-tiered um, uh, service model. So the ability to communicate effectively is, is an, an implicit requirement. In, in many cases, or in simple cases, the network is really just considered to be pay-as-you-go. So for instance, uh, Amazon charges for bytes transferred in and out of the cloud, um, not from their own S3 storage system, but bytes transferred in and out. So as a, a, a number of uh, research efforts and, uh, and uh, technical studies to quantify cloud performance have shown, um, there are, this also has important implications. So if w you're not able to specify the network, if you're really just sort of sub subjected to whatever networking connectivity you get, then uh, the, the efficacy, the performance of, of applications can be potentially uh, limited. 
And it's important to note, um, especially in the case of Amazon, that paying for what you get is not the same as getting what you want. So we'll talk about uh, ways in which the network requirements of an application or service can be spe uh, specified and therefore controlled. So <clears throat> one key promise of the cloud is resource uh, mobility. Um, we can think about that in terms of economics. Initially with uh, grid computing and cloud computing, um, we thought a lot about uh, the ability to have uh, computing and storage be commoditized. So we can think economically, who has the best price? Um, the demand is down at one site, and therefore uh, um, the, the price is going, uh, going down uh, to, to draw users so we can move computing or storage to where it makes the most sense economically. Um, there are also what I could say is uh, business logic decisions. So, so who has the most availability? For a given turnaround time, who, which, which provider uh, has um, availability and resources that would um, uh, allow um, us to meet the, allow a user to meet the business goals in terms of turnaround time of a job? Um, one, one key idea in, in terms of considering the economics of the cloud is the fungibility of resources. So fungibility means, fungible means interchangeable or equivalent, and this is used um, by economists to discuss um, currency or, or goods that are freely exchangeable. For there to be a market uh, for a good, we need to ha have the goods that are uh, uh, from potential providers be equivalent. Um, uh, in a sense, if, if they're if they're vastly different, then then they're not they're not interchangeable. And um, the the fungibility of cloud resources depends on very much the performance of the network and the the resources available in terms of the network. So today, uh, computing is is often uh, what we refer to as tethered to the data. If if and that in a sense is because uh, if the network connectivity is not sufficient, if you can't move the data effectively um, to where compute is available, then that compute is not useful to you. So in, in a lot of times we think about um, should we move the compute power toward the data? Should we allocate computing resources near where the data is? Or do we need to move the data to the computing uh, resources? And obviously that depends on uh, the ability to move it effectively over the network. So my, my position is that the uh, cloud division of, of, of clouds re requires more flexibility than move the compute to the data or, or move data to the compute. Um, and, and we need to think about breaking the data tether uh, so that cloud resources are truly fungible and can be used, uh, really can be used regardless of their location. So I, I believe that uh, and I've said for some time that network as a service, the ability to allocate network resources, specify and allocate deterministic network resources, is the missing piece in the cloud computing picture. We have uh, successfully virtualized compute and storage, but without the ability to connect those in ways that meet the application goals, uh, the vision is, is significantly limited. <clears throat> 